with Anna here. Today I am going to show you uh, six ways uh, how you can use stencils to make backgrounds, not only for cards, but the examples will be used on cards. I am starting with this uh, new uh, stencil from scrapbook.com called Scallop. It's their exclusive line of stencils and I've got six to play with. Uh, from the newest release. I will link you everything in the description box. I love how big the stencil is. It's bigger than 6x6 and 6x6 sometimes is just too little when you have bigger cards and this one is just perfect. And I will be inking it using two Distress Oxide inks called Picked Raspberry and Peacock Feathers. And I am using Doom Foam Applicator from scrapbook.com which works like butter with uh, every ink and stencils too, as you can see. I am working on a piece of watercolor paper and it's a thick paper that can hold a lot of water and uh, after, um, after inking the background, I will spray it softly with uh, iridescent mist. It doesn't have any color, it only has a shimmer and the paper won't wave, won't react any, anyhow with the, uh, with the mist because it's a watercolor paper. As you can see, I have a connection of uh, pink and blue which created a pretty uh, purple color in the middle. And now it's the shimmer and I will be back to you to show you the finished card with this background. For this card, I used a background created with uh, this stencil called Scallop and uh, I went really <laughs> classical here. Uh, I applied two Distress Oxide inks, uh, picked Raspberry and Peacock Feathers using those Doom Foam uh, applicators from scrapbook.com. They are exclusive product from scrapbook.com. And I applied uh, the ink for the stencil and in the middle there grew a blue and pink mix creating a purple color and then I sew around the uh, background with white thread using my sewing machine. The next step was to cut out mermaid tail and the waves and those uh, <laughs> starfishes. Um, using dies from Jane Davenport. They are, I think, from the last year release. This is uh, with her collaboration with Spellbinders. And I have three sets. The one with Mermaid Tail and the Starfish is called uh, Mer Tail. And they are in a pretty mint color. <laughs> Something like this draws my attention right away. I cut it out the waves with a mermaid for each other um, set and this set contains of waves but it also have a we were mermaid for each other title and the title you are unique for the card i cut out from this set and this one is called you are unique and you have title and stars and hearts so uh, i use them to cut out elements and uh, some of them i cut it out with this metallic um, silver paper and you will able to see my face <laughs> for a bit so uh, i use this one i'm not sure which company is it because i got like two sheets from my friend i'm not a very silver type of a person but um uh, but uh, this time it, it was really, really handy. And I also used the new product from scrapbook.com. This is the new foam, uh, premium foam adhesive that comes in sheets. And I glue down a piece of metallic paper uh, to the piece of uh, foam. And I went round and I um, put them into my die cutting machine. And see, I have like a thicker phone title. It was hard to pick up those middle elements, but I thought that they are quite uh, irrelevant and you can still uh, read the title, so I left them. But with the more bold letters, it will be really, really awesome to create your own. It looks like a phone sticker from, I don't know, American Crafts. And this is really, really great feature of those. Um, premium foam adhesive and uh, the dye ran through all the layers except the last protective um, protective I don't know this protective paper so I just had to unwrap it 
uh, to have to pull out the title and it's also filled with a lot of shimmer i cut it out the tail of the mermaid with a piece of watercolor paper and i painted it i painted uh, purple tail with uh, one of my very very old glimmer mists the color is called Deep Plum and I have it for ages, but you can use a different color. I just wanted it to be shimmery so I could use watercolors too. And I painted the tail into the silver color using uh, Prima watercolors. And this is the silver color from the Cat and Pie set. And I painted uh, waves using this almost uh, finished Jenny B. Black color from Shimmers. So I'm only using it to paint because it's too little to spray with it. And I finished the card adding a few sequins. They are just random sequins from uh, like local art shop. Nothing like with a brand name. The same uh, is for those uh, sequin shells. I just like the color. So this is the uh, card with the scallop background. And uh, I use the mermaid tail because the scallop uh, pattern reminded me of a fish sea. And my daughter really, really loved this card. So it will be for her birthday. Another idea for the background will be created with this snowflake stencil and uh, I wanted to create a snowy background. Uh, I will use it on the cards, but you can use similar background on the layouts easily. And uh, once again, I'm using watercolor paper for all of my cards. I use watercolor paper scraps and uh, I am using 3D gloss gel. It's gel from uh, Prima Marketing and I am mixing the gel, which is white now, but it will dry transparent and it will have a glossy finish. And I'm mixing it with uh, some fine glitter. And I have this glitter for like forever. I think it's an American Crafts uh, glitter, but I'm not sure. And I'm just mixing it with the spatula. And now it doesn't look good because it's like a milky, uh, dirty something. But when it will dry, the gel will um, become transparent and the glitter will uh, create this pretty shine in between the transparent, um, transparent snowflakes. And I'm using spatula to apply it over the stencil. I am trying to fill, uh, fill the snowflakes with the exact amount of, uh, of, um, of gel. So they will not be like one will be smaller, like a thicker one will be thinner. And when it's uh, applied, I am leaving it to dry on air. You can rush it with the heat gun, but be careful because the 3D gloss gel can bubble if you direct too much heat over it. And I will be back to you for the second um, part of the process when the card will be dry. And it's dry already. See how pretty it is, how shiny. Can you imagine the layout with the background like this? Uh, I will for sure come back to this technique for the layout itself. And now I am uh, painting the rest of the card using a silver, silver paint. It's the one I showed you in the previous card when I was painting the mermaid tail. It's a silver uh, shimmering uh, watercolor from the Cut and Pie set. And I'm just painting all over my background, uh, focusing on the snowflakes because I wanted to be sure that each part of the paper will be uh, painted and see how the gray color highlights the stencil shapes here. And I really love how it uh, turns out. And I will be back to you with a presentation of finished card. This card was made with the snowflake stencil and uh, I think this is the, the one that I like the most from the 606 uh, that I've got because I always wanted to have the big snowflakes and uh, after finishing my background and letting it dry I added a piece of metallic cardstock to back the background and this one has a grey uh, card base uh, then I uh, went uh, with my die cutting machine using those very, very old uh, dies from Tim Holtz. I have them for many years. They are the biggest uh, snowflakes I have. It's not the best quality of cutting and I need to purchase some different, but every year I forget. So I have three um, 
uh, free snowflakes using the metallic paper and then I added a title Merry Xmas and I use Xmas. I use those stickers. I have them in my stash for a while, so it's not nothing new. And those are from Paige Evans Pick Me Up collection. And with those, I did Mary. And I finished my card, adding a few sequins from this crap medley. I really love those sets. I have different sets of colors, and this uh, silver was just perfect. So this card is really, really sparky, and I really love how it turned out. Next idea uh, will be with using this hard stencil. I am starting with spraying uh, the water over my piece of uh, watercolor paper and I will be using uh, magical shakers from uh, Lindy's Stamp Gang. This is Oompa Pa Pink color and the name is really, really funny. And it's just uh, like a powdered watercolor. So it reacts with water beautifully. And uh, at first I was going just to drop some water water drops because I was too lazy to go to the bathroom to fill the jar with the water and then I decided no I will just spray it all over because the pigment didn't solve that well and I added some more and uh, I am spraying uh, more water and see the color starts flowing and I love this kind of a marble effect that is created on the card and uh, I will just absorb the excess of water and I will leave it like this to dry and well it when the background will be dry I will be back with my stencil and I will apply um, color through it and I didn't rush it with uh, heat gun uh, because I didn't want to uh, make the color flow all over I just left it like it is the background is dry you can still see you can still see the marble effect and it's a very shiny powder so it shines really pretty and i will apply a heart through the stencil uh, using distress oxide in cold picked raspberry this is the one i used on the first card and i will be doing it using uh, two uh, applicator and uh, this stencil doesn't have like a lot of hearts so you can create kind of a loose heart pattern but you can um, apply the hearts once and then move the stencil a little bit up and a little bit to the left or to the right to create kind of a second row of um, of hearts and the pattern will be kind of a thicker uh, but i liked this way so i left it left it like it is after I applied uh, the color for the stencil, I'm wiping off uh, the excess, uh, sorry for the camera, the excess ink uh, from the stencil. And now I am applying um, embossing ink through the stencil because I want my heart to be shiny and covered like with um, with a shiny surface so i'm just dabbing it making sure i will reach all the hearts so you can help yourself with a sponge or with a finger just make sure you will fill in all those details in the stencil because otherwise the powder won't stick into the hard surface and i think it's done i am using the clear powder um, embossing powder uh, to uh, melt the heart you can use a different color if you want to add more color and uh, but i just wanted wanted the shine a little bit of texture but i like the color of picked raspberry distress oxiding and my background is uh, done i will be back to you with the card uh, i made with this background uh, I didn't use a 3D gloss gel because I wanted the uh, edges of the heart to be soft and kind of melted with the surface. This card was created with a screw heart a stencil and I started with uh, coloring my background with this uh, Linden Stab Gang Magical Shaker, but you have you have seen it in the first video. And then I cut it out the heart in the middle using, oh, I forgot to add them to the pile. Here they are. Using those Altenew Houghton Hearts Nesting Die. And I used this heart to cut out the heart in the middle of my card. Then I packed it with a piece of plastic, a 
round it with a foam tape to create a sealed shaker and then filled with uh, sequins that I had in my stash. Uh, I sew around with white thread both around the uh, heart and around the background and I finished my card adding title uh, I love you and I used those indigo heels too from Pink Fresh Studio uh, alphabet stickers and uh, I cut it out those uh, flowers with gold um, metallic paper and some uh, pink cardstock using those Sizzix uh, dies. They are from Tim Holtz. They have, I don't know the name. I don't remember the name. Let me check if I have them. No, I don't have any of them uh, of the names left, but they are from Tim Holtz, kind of white flowers or something like that. This is not a brand new product. I have it for a year and I use it for the first time in this card. So uh, here's the shaker pocket and this is how the card looks. They are open this way. Fourth idea uh, with the stenciling doesn't include any mixed media. It only includes the die cutting machine and the embossing plates. Uh, because you can emboss with your stencils, which I am going to do with this pattern. It was inspired by one of the Monatop uh, cards made for uh, scrapbook.com with their exclusive cut files. And I'm doing similar things with uh, making embossing background with... Um, with stencil, just make sure your stencil is clean because otherwise it will cover uh, the paper with the uh, leftover color. And uh, I just roll it with how you're supposed to roll every other element in your machine. See how pretty it is embossed? This is the card I created with the background that I embossed with the stencil. So this is something you can do with your stencil. You can use them for embossing. And uh, the impression in the paper isn't that deep like with uh, real embossing uh, folders but it's a nice way to stretch your uh, to stretch your uh, stencils and this is uh, how it turned out um, I made all the cards in the same size and shape and uh, this one uh, has a background the next step was to sewing around the background with the green thread um, then I took this twine and uh, some, uh, I don't know, <laughs> plastic pearls, corals, I don't know how to say, uh, what's the name of this in English. Uh, they are from my stash and I have them like maybe 10 years now. And I just added them onto the string and I started with gluing the string back on one side, added a few of those and then I roll it behind the background, then I added the, another batch, then I roll it under the background, I added a, another bunch. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows with, um, really, I needed to check the word with those. And they, uh, they are movable, so they kind of make an interactive card. And I finished my composition adding few stickers uh, from um, Snowflake collection from Crate Paper. This is this sticker sheet and the title from uh, these stickers, they are from Pebbles. I don't know. I think it's the newest uh, Christmas line they have, like this year Christmas line, but I am not sure I had it in my Christmas stash. So this is uh, how the first card looked, made with uh, trees embossing folder. Before you emboss, make sure your folder is clear because sometimes I'm too lazy to clear it after using some inks and the impression may, be, uh, may become dirty from the stencil. Another idea is to use the stencil over the piece of paper and then cut out elements out of uh, the uh, colored uh, background. So we will not use this part as a background itself. We will use um, the stenciled paper to cut out circles to make a card. I'm just using my favorite colors of mists turquoise, pink, yellow and green. This is my go-to combo for every 
every project. I just love those colors. I'm just spraying over the background. I'm using watercolor paper, so it's kind of forgiving when it comes to moisture. And I'm just using the colors. I'm trying not to mix them or overlap them one over another. See how pretty it looks? And I'm using the uh, pattern called herring bone. Sorry, <laughs> hard, hard name to pronounce for me. And the fourth color will be green. And I will be back to you with the card made with those, uh, with this background. This card is a very colorful, <laughs> cheerful, uh, happy birthday card. And it was created with herring bone uh, stencil. Uh, from the pattern that I sprayed with my mist, I used those Spellbinder circle dies to cut out few circles in different colors. I glued them down to my uh, base and my base contains of uh, blue cardstock and a piece of white cardstock to so around with the blue color. And uh, I stamped my happy birthday title using this Concord 9th birthday balloon stamp set. And this is the first time I used this stamp set and I only used the title, so it's time to make some awesome card with it. And I finished it with a colorful sequins, they are from my stash. And it really took me like 10 minutes to finish this card, but I really, really like the colorful effect it gives. So this one is really simple. You can do exactly the same with every other pattern of stencil. It's just an idea. You don't have to always use uh, the whole piece that went through the stencil, you can cut out elements of it and it's also a use of stencil. Last idea involves using this honeycomb uh, stencil to create background and I'm starting similar as I did with my uh, first project. So I'm placing the stencil over the background and now I am adding three colors, picked raspberry, uh, squeezed lemonade and... I don't know, no, it's a mustard seed and, oh, I forgot the color. <laughs> I will add it to the description box, but I'm adding three colors, creating kind of an ombre effect. And before I will remove my stencil, I would apply water. So this technique is only valid with uh, distress oxide inks or distress inks because they react with water. So if you spray with water uh, over the stencil, you can absorb the pigment from um from the uh, the inks uh, but you will have kind of the area in between the hexagons uh, still white-ish because they will kind of float a little bit. So it's a kind of a messy background and uh, I am adding water, but I'm not spraying all over it. I just want to create few bigger drops of water, kind of a splatters, because I don't want to move every single uh, piece of the color over this paper. I left the background to try on air and I will be back to you with a finished card with this particular background. This card was made with this honeycomb uh, stencil and I use my Distress Oxide inks, uh, as you have seen in the first part. And when everything was dry, I uh, sew around uh, my base with the white thread. And then I took those hexagon dies, I don't remember the company, and I have them for quite a while too, to cut out three hexagons in different sizes uh, using a uh, cardstock paper. And then I took a um, watercolor paper to cut out three flowers and three set of leaves using this die from Altenew. This is layered floral die. And uh, I just cut it out three flowers so it went fast. And then I took my Prima watercolors and I colored them down. I have three sets, tropicals, um, classics and decadent pies and I use them for years now. So uh, I cut it out the flowers, I glued them down, I created my title mixing uh, those Joyful Day stickers from Pink First Studio and those uh, stickers from, I don't know, maybe last year or, or two years ago, Valentine's Day collection uh, from, I think it was Crate Paper, but I don't remember. And I finished my card using uh, enamel stickers from Fractured Foam. And you can use 
a different thicker, uh, different enamel dots. If you have ones, I just had this one in matching colors. So I added three dots here, three dots here, and three here, plus two enamel hearts. And this is how the finish effect looks like.